I think we, there is a, a couple of interesting abstracts at uh, this year's uh, EHA presentation um, on uh, IDH inhibition, um, specifically with uh, anacidinib. Anacidinib is an IDH, in, IDH2 inhibitor. It's a novel potent inhibitor of the aberrant protein. Uh, it was studied in uh, dose escalation and dose expansion studies of patients with relapsed refractory IDH2 mutated disease. Um, and also in multiple cohorts, including newly diagnosed disease. Um, one of the abstracts that was uh, presented uh, um, at this year's meeting was the AML004, uh, the primary results of that, which basically looked at uh, the um, comparison of um, uh, the IDH2 inhibitor uh, and acidinib versus uh, conventional care regimens for those patients. This study was predominantly uh, conducted at uh, European sites, um, and uh, the results uh, ultimately revealed that there was not an overall survival advantage uh, to anacidna versus conventional care regimens. However, the uh, overall response rate and the composite remission rates for individuals receiving anacidinib uh, versus conventional care regimens uh, were higher. So clinical responses were quite impressive, as were the uh, rates of uh, transfusional independence. So there was certainly, it appeared to be at least a clinical impact, although the uh, overall survival endpoint w was not reached. And there are multiple uh, potential explanations. We don't know for sure, obviously, but uh, w whether there was a, an, a, an influence of subsequent therapies and uh, patients who were in the conventional care arm receiving maybe subsequently uh, an acidinib impacting that arm and improving it in comparison. Uh, there were certainly a number of patients that received an uh, subsequently, which may have uh, led to the lack of a, a statistical significant difference in overall survival uh, in this um, uh, randomized study. The other study uh, looked at uh, the combination of uh, the same IDH2 inhibitor and acidinib uh, with um, a conventional backbone uh, azacitidine, which is a hypomethylating agent, um, and to see if that is different than azacitidine alone. So it was a randomized phase two uh, part of a larger study that looked at that uh, comparison specifically. Um, and again, there was uh, increased uh, response uh, in individuals who received azacitidine um, and anacidinib, but there was not an advantage in overall survival in this relatively small uh, study. Um, and again, there may have been an impact uh, of subsequent therapies in the individuals who received azacitidine alone in terms of whether once they came off treatment, they received subsequent anacidinib therapy. So I think these are both very important studies. They uh, provide some information regarding uh, the uh, robustness of response uh, in patients who receive anacidinib in the relapse refractory setting, as well as its combination with azacitidine in the newly diagnosed setting.